they got me over in the, in the bay. <laughs> <laughs> I need one of those. What's up? I might rock with that. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Kim and Lakeisha and Amanda. Welcome, everybody. Good evening. We're going to be hey. getting started soon. Thank you so much for coming. Okay. Jay Coleman, what it do? Salute. You know, brother. I see you doing it, doing it, doing it. I see you, I see you training that kennel over there. Bro, they better be. <laughs> they better be. So, we getting there. It's the, the, the young one that's the hard head. The, yeah, the I, nine bet, I bet. I bet. You got to go home, so go. Gentlemen, gentlemen, glad that you all can make it, make it, make it today. We made it through another day. This might be the last day with the war coming. <laughs> the war has started. The war has started. Well, the war been started. The war has been started. <laughs> Are we going to yeah. get in trouble? Are we about to get in trouble already? Look, see? see? No, what, it's hey, cool. no World War Three talk here. Okay, hey, look, 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 see, see? It's just another chapter in the big book, right? But yes, everybody, thank you guys for coming out to this panel discussion. Um, I'm DJ R. Is. I'm the host of Release Open Mic, which is actually this Sunday at the Anacostia Art Center from 2 to 7. And I just want to thank you guys for coming out. And I want to thank you guys, the 12 people who already jumped on in. 14 people, thanks for being on time. Hey, y'all. All right, we're just gonna kick it off in the next few minutes. We're gonna have Waykiff start it off and let, you know, introduce Waykiff to everybody. Cause Waykiff is, some people know who it is, some people don't. So, you know, we're gonna start with the, the background people and then they gonna, we're gonna go through the panel. The panel's gonna introduce themselves to everybody. Yeah, about a couple, about a couple of minutes, 6.34, I think about, about 6.36, we'll go ahead and get started because we got a definitely a big, big hour packed of some goodness, right? So we want to get into it. So a couple more minutes, folks, and we'll jump right on into it here. Get it started shortly. It's about to be go time, folks. Go time. I got the fire going. All right, we'll be starting in just another minute. So. chat box. All right. All right, so we're going to kick this off. Once again, this is DJ R is. I want everybody to welcome our sponsor for this evening and the guy who got this all going so we could all meet up and talk from Wakeif. Well, Good afternoon. Yeah, on the mic. Here we go. Hey, 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 there we go. What's up, what's up, artists? Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Uh, welcome everybody this evening to this event. We have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful panel discussion this evening, running your race, resilient creatives in action. That's what it's all about tonight. We've got some incredible gents that are going to get into that here just momentarily. Once again, let's not forget, let's do a quick reminder, running your race, resilient creatives in action is happening right here tonight. I am Rasul Shair. I am a education and small business manager, a small advisor a manager here at Waco. Uh, and part of my job and part of my everyday experiences is being on the microphone every day and supporting small businesses, entrepreneurs, and those with big ideas, big visions to make things happen. Uh, part of our job here is pretty twofold. Part of it is to provide financing support for businesses and also advisory support. If folks are trying to figure out strategy, uh, do I need an accountant? What direction do I need the business go in? What are the resources I need? What gaps need to be filled in? We are here to help you all with those challenges, with those issues, help you get from point A to point B. Once again, surviving, thriving, and making sure things are going as you can accordingly in the way that makes sense for you. So once again, we are absolutely excited about collaborating today with the Anacostia Arts Center, Anacostia Arts Center, excuse me, for this creative, uh, creative, wonderful program tonight. Um, in addition to that, just a quick, uh, some initiatives that we actually have coming through. We actually just launched this evening um, our next iteration of our Ascend Accelerator program, uh, that program, and I'll actually put that in the link a little bit later on this evening. So before the evening's over, I'll put a link and share information on that. Uh, but we run a cohort program, which we take about anywhere from 10 to 15 businesses for about a 10 month program. And we give you insights, resources, uh, understanding, training uh, around marketing, financing, uh, engagement, business performance, all those things, once again, in terms of how to make your business thrive, how to make your business prosper. And we actually just launched that. Applications are open tonight, and I'll share a link with that uh, later on here. Uh, so just a little bit more background here about Wake Up in terms of what we do and what we're about. Um, really, it's about our vision. Um, our vision is really about an equitable and just society where communities can get together and prosper, both people and the ecosystem as it pertains to entrepreneurship. So that's really our big vision. That's what we're going for. That's what we're striving for. That's what we're pursuing on a daily basis. Um, and once again, our mission is once again, just to increase equity and economic opportunity in underserved and up and coming communities and individuals. Uh, once again, it's all about being able to inject that social financial capital um, and knowledge capital into the ecosystem, into entrepreneurs. And once again, ensure that prosperity and businesses are able to thrive and able to be successful. And once again, the values uh, is once again, it's about the facet of our work, which should be directed towards and reflect an unwavering commitment to fair and equal access and opportunities for all. So once again, this panel is really just a reflection of all those things that I just stated, you know, being there for the community, equitable growth and just uh, uh, prosperity, and just making sure that we are a resource for the community for all things entrepreneurship and just holistic living. And once again, this event tonight is just another reflection of that. So once again, I am very much excited uh, that folks are able to make this evening's panel discussion. And so I'm going to pass the mic on to our esteemed, prolific, and probably legendary, if you don't know that by now, you will by the end of this evening, uh, Mr. and good Dr. Artis Jones. And so I'm going to go ahead and let you take the mic. I'm going to step aside. I'm going to go ahead and let you just go ahead and take on the rest of this evening, my friend. All right. All right. Hey, everybody. This is DJ Art Is in the building. So I am DJ Art Is of Art is Positive Empowerment. I am a host, an MC, an event coordinator, a little activist. Basically, I am my name. My name is mm -hmm. Artis. I am an artist. That's just how it ended up rolling out. And I'm your host for this evening, moderating this um, discussion about Black resilience. So we have a panel of Black creatives from this area and beyond, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves so you can get into them and what they do in their art. So we're going to start from, I don't know if everybody sees it in the same order, so I'm going to just call out a name. So if you could just introduce yourself, tell people what you do in the region, I'll just do it like that. Tell people what you do in the region and then say, you know, Thank you first for being here. So I'll start with you, Jason. Tell the people about yourself, you know, what you do in the area and why you're here. 
Peace to everybody. Um, thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to share and be a part of the, the panel program. Shout out my man, Jay Coleman on there. I see you, brother. Yeah. Um, so again, my name is Jason, uh, Ward 8 resident, born and raised right here in Anacostia. Um, I'm an artist like you, artist, but my name is an artist. Um, but, you know, my disciplines typically stay in the range of music, film, and theater. I have a production company called SE3 LLC. <clears throat> I have an organizing and like uh, grassroots uh, uh, organization called Southeast Trinity, where I you know, work with youth and do workshops all throughout the city and, and high schools, you know, working with arts and life skills training. Um, I have a nonprofit organization that I'm vice president of called Cedar United, where we work with, you know, specifically Ward 7 and 8. Uh, communities in regards to alternative education to uh, to attempt to equip um, young men and women to survive, um, you know, who don't feel that the school system is supporting them or giving them the elements uh, that they need for survival. So we, we offer them um, different, you know, alternatives to, to provide for themselves as, as young adults in this world. And also I'm affiliated you know, as like an event coordinator with Nubian Human, which is located right in the Anacostia Art Center. So those are the main uh, organizations and institutions that I tend to be uh, affiliated with. So, and again, I appreciate the opportunity to be on the panel. No, thank you, Jason, for doing all that you do. I'm gonna just start off with that. Like, thank you, you do, you're a force. I'm gonna just say it just like that. You're a force out here. A lot of people won't even step into the shoes of helping you know, someone else. So just thank you for all that you do. I'm gonna thank kick you. it over next to Lee. So Lee, tell the people what you do. Thanks for coming right. out. No, thank you for the invite. Happy to be here. Uh, my name is Lee Levinson Perrine. My pronouns are he, him. Uh, I'm the founder of Black in Space. So uh, basically we celebrate and uplift black, queer and trans communities. Uh, we do that through media, storytelling and technology. And we are based here in DC. So I'm holding it down um, in Ward 5. Um, we started out as a group called Makers Lab, but in response to the Rona, we transformed the organization into Black in Space. And uh, since that like revamp in 2020, we've done two festivals. Um, we do re-release um, video content on Black in Space TV. We also drop soundscapes and mixes uh, because we do believe like sound is healing. Um, and we just dropped our latest project today with Willie Mammoth, um, which is an interview about um, Octavia Butler because we're helping them promote the show Parable of the Sower. Um, that we're just going to be at the Strathmore in April. So we do a lot of things. And then when I'm not doing that, I do actually do have a government job. So I work uh, for DC government in the creative affairs office. So I also wear that hat. So thank you so much, Lee, for helping the community, the LGBTQIA. Look, look, look. All that. All that. Right. They need representation right. and they need love, just like everybody else. Thank you. Thank you. I would drop it off to the, to the photo man, Mr. Shedrick. What it do? Sir, yes, sir. I appreciate y'all having me out, man. This is, uh, you know, this is, something that uh, I'm glad to see happening more and more uh, uh, in, the, in the Black community and especially among Black men. So uh, my name is Shedrick Pelt. Uh, I'm a photojournalist, uh, historian, culture kid. Um, I'm a transplant um, from, uh, from the South, the dirty South, Alabama. Um, and uh, my work, I, I look for my work to really be able to connect with uh, culture and community in a very authentic uh, and positive way. Um, I've been blessed to be able to, you know, to, to, to come to D.C. And, and cover a lot of historic events and, and really tap in to the community in a way that really fulfills myself uh, as a tribe member. Um, and um, I'm, just, I'm just blessed to be able to be on this panel with everybody. So thank you. No, thank you so much, Cedric. Um, I was just thinking about it since we're in a little interactive group. If you guys could just drop your socials in the chat so that everybody could kind of just get into y'all from right here, right now. You know, we get that connection going right here, right now, so people can get into y'all. And let's just drop it on to my man, Jay Coleman. Tell him about your big player. What's happening? Um, depending on when you met me, Jay Coleman or Per A, Ja Lyon, to, to many others who've known me for longer than recently. Um, just a local artist, man. Uh, been doing music for years, been doing visual art, 2D and 3D. Uh, mostly murals and bronze sculpture nowadays. Um, still some music in the horizon when I got some time for it. Uh, 
caretaker for, for two seniors, my mom, and my aunt. So that takes some time. And that's, that's part of what we got to do as black men that we don't talk about. We talk about our kids, but we also got to take care of our elders. Um, that's a, a very important part of our, our, our responsibility as men. Um, you know, right, act, all, all, the, all the things that black people do that are indigenous to our culture in all different forms. So, you know, people look at it here as disciplines because everything is partitioned and, and sectionalized, but actually all of those are um, different facets of our culture. So, you know, pretty much everything art, except for I don't really do ballet and, uh, you know, but. But other than that, anything art, man, you know, sign me up. All right, so we are talking to a panel of artists here who are working actively behind the scenes, on the scenes, front lines, trying to make things happen for other creatives. Um, I did a little bit of research on everybody, but everybody's out here trying to open the doorways for everybody else. So we're gonna talk about black resilience today. And so when we talk about resilience, we just gonna say the black experience is resilience itself, like period. We're just gonna say, you got to be strong. So I'm gonna just start with the definition so that we can kind of base what resilience is based off of. Resilience is defined as the process of adapting well in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, threats, or significant sources of stress. So I just want everybody to, to like sit in that for a second and then realize that we've, we've been through that at constant from day one. But as a business, like what may, what is something that you could think about right now that was an example of like, wow, I got through that. Like what was one of those things that I didn't think I could get through that? You know, one of those instances, like I, 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 I didn't think when I started, I could get through this to get me where I am now, if you get what I'm saying. And anybody could just jump on there. You know, I'll say, I'll jump in there. I'll say, and I think this is probably, you know, pretty general across the board, this feeling is like, you know, when you're jumping out there and you're trying to, trying to get on or make it, you know, you're knocking on a lot of doors, you know, and, and it's, all, it's, all, it's not always very inviting uh, for, for Black people when they're, you know, knocking on doors, trying to find opportunities and, you know, I found a lot of resilience as a photographer, just knowing that, and especially as a journalist working in a, a field that's uh, predominantly, uh, you know, um, you know, dominated or whatever by my white colleagues that, you know, I get a lot of doors closed uh, in my face. So, you know, it's been a matter of me just continuing to knock on those doors, but not just like haphazardly knocking on doors, but also, you know, knocking on those doors and coming with some substance behind me. You know what I'm saying? A little some extra, you know, unfortunately we do have to come with a little some extra sometimes um, when we're vying for those positions and, and it may just be is what it is, but um, you know, you have to be kind of, and I have been, you know, just active about knowing that, you know, um, I have to keep at it and I have to make sure that I bring some substance with me. Thank you. Thank you for that, Cedric. Does anybody else have an example of like looking at where you are sitting right now, like, I didn't think I could do this. And now looking at it like you were resilient because blank, an example or of a circumstance. And if not, I could just jump to the next question, which was what does resilience mean to you? Because yeah, like what makes you resilient? Jason? Um, you say what makes me resilient? I mean, you know, uh, we all are. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Just, just for, you know, to be honest, man, you dealing with a panel of like black men who have stayed the course in following art. So I don't even know these brothers, but I'm sure there's been so much resistance from probably family first, and then friends and community. there we go there we go that's the, that's, oh. that's 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 the conversation that that's what we got to talk about like that's yeah. what we got to open the doors because that's what's holding the rest of us back like that yeah. that those those instances yeah so you know and now you know you speak of resilience man it's like you know art is just an expression of people's resilience from my perspective it's like you know because like i said in the opening man like I'm born and raised in Southeast. And um, 
I was, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't sheltered from it. You know, like I, you know, as they say, I, I jumped off the porch, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I got an interesting perspective uh, because it's the balance of being able to, uh, to articulate certain experiences that most of my peers didn't really had an opportunity to, to, to master, you know, due to whatever reason, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, you know, so to be in a position where I can articulate the experiences of this culture from a perspective, like, you know, a lot of people can't come in the neighborhoods I could come in or, or be affiliated with the people I'm affiliated with, but at the same time, lead, lead a block and go to a, a million dollar executive meeting and be able to articulate and share experiences and stories and, 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 and package it in a way, and, you know, where we, where we represent it in a way that isn't degrading and, you know, not compromising who we are as a community who, you know, so it's, you know, so I, I don't even know these brothers on this panel, but if they here right now logged in, you know, we've all experienced extreme um, examples of, of resilience, especially as, as a black man and especially as an artist, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, that's- Yeah, that's and, 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 and I guess, so what, I, I guess what I wanna push through this conversation is to inspire everybody who didn't take that step, who might be still sitting in those people, those naysayers that got them saying that they can't go or they can't do this. Like, let's talk about like, what was those examples and what made me step through those resilient that stepped through that anyway, you know, because looking at it now, it was a it was a turning point. Something said there was a, a point of no return where it said, all right, and this is what it is. And now you're five years, 10 years, 15 years later, looking at this panel. You get what I'm saying? Nah, but let me stop you right there, because I, I definitely want to hear from from the other brothers. But, mm -hmm. you know, we, we also got to be 100 with ourselves, too. Like everybody ain't built for it. So if they feeling that that hesitancy, hesitancy in their spirit, it might be right. Cause everybody on this panel know you got to be gangster to pursue the arts. You know, it's, it's not for the weak. You're going to be told you suck. You're going to be told it ain't worth it. You, you wasting your career, you wasting your time. And it's like, so it's like everybody. So I don't want to just encourage everybody to push through. It's like, nah, it's like, if you, you can't, you know what I'm saying, no outside entity. I, I, <laughs> I, think you brought up the great, I think you brought up the greatest point is rejection. So I think let's start off with that. So how do you handle rejection as a business, as an artist? And I'll, I'll switch that over to Lee. And especially moving in the LGBT section. Like, I, I know I have issues with it. So, you know, let's, 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 let's talk about, it. like, you know. Um, I would say in terms of rejection, well, I think, I'm, I'm a little different than some of the people on the panel because I'm not a full-time artist. I, I have been a full-time entrepreneur before and it was probably some of the most stressful times in my life. And so I did go back to a quote unquote traditional job while I build black in space and then I'll go make that leap again. But until then I needed like the anchor um, of a full-time job. But I think what that does is in some ways it limits some of the rejection because I have more control of the types of projects that I take on, right? So that means I can, yeah, like who I wanna collab with, what I wanna produce. So luckily a lot of what we create at Black and Space is stuff that we really connect with and we're, um, there, there's, there's not a lot of rejection there. Um, and so I guess, I guess we're fortunate in that, but if I was to do this full time, you know, and like putting myself out there and making more bids for projects and things like that, I guess then that would be that like level of persistence and knowing like, um, it, it's either no, but it could be like no for right now, or maybe just no altogether. But there are other people who are going to support my work and our work in the ways that it needs to be supported. And so I guess I maybe have developed a thicker skin over time as well. Absolutely. Jay, like, so, you know, rejection happens. We're artists. People don't just like what we do. They just don't like it. It just doesn't rock their boat. So how, how do we build that resilience to keep going in the face of no every day? Cause it's kind of at the everyday point that's when you really, really want to put yourself out there, how you keep going. It's, it's not a broad stroke though. Cause I think when people say artists, they assume you cover the full spectrum. Some of us do, but not everyone just so like, if somebody says you're a musician, um, you're supposed to play everything or you're supposed to sing everything. And that might not be your thing. You're an artist. Well, can you paint my, can you paint this picture of my grandmother? Yeah, that's what I do. Um, but 
everybody doesn't do portraiture, just like tattoos. So the point I'm making is that rejection on different levels also is dependent upon the angle with which you produce or live off of your art. Is it an ego thing? Is it a business thing? I got two rejections today uh, for some projects that I put some stuff in. I didn't, I didn't push it too hard, but you know, okay, well, you didn't get this mural. You didn't get that mural. Well, as a public artist who competes for work, that's part of the game. So, you know, you're talking about somebody who might be a weekend warrior versus somebody, if I don't, if I don't hunt, I don't eat. Right. So, you know, and 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 I've had, I mean, my background is education. So I've, you know, I've I've worked special ed, you know, I've been a principal, I've been special ed coordinator, I've been speech therapist. Like that whole side of my life is a whole, you know, um, so when I was working the desk job and still painting in my office or in my classroom or doing different things like that, uh, it's a choice and we all make choices. Um, you got a fight or a flee response. So you can choose to stay or you can choose to roll out. And some people are gonna take that ass whooping and come back to school the next day. Some people, you ain't gonna see them no more. Right, and, right. That's what my boy Jay was talking about. So. You know, and they're not all of us that can do that. You know, I got murals in parts of the city that no one will ever see because they they scared to go there. <laughs> but so so it, it, it all balances back to choices, first of all. Second of all, um, how hard are you willing to go for you? And 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 is enough out here for everybody to eat. You don't gotta step on somebody else to win. Now, if somebody gonna play dirty and it's gonna be my life, then it's gonna be some different shit to go on. Excuse my French. Right. But at the time, if you win it and you have a winning mentality, you're gonna win. You're gonna win somewhere. So I got two rejection letters today for, for certain projects, but some other stuff came through as well. And I'm like, okay. And, well, I'm, I'm, and I'm glad that you mentioned it just like that because I was on, on the topic of resilience that sometimes you have to turn down a gig. Like, you know, we have to talk about that. We have, to, as artists, we have to actually refuse the gig because it doesn't fit our vision. So I want to, you know, let Shedrick, let's talk about a, right, so Shedrick, let's talk about a time when you had something that someone wanted to hire you for something that didn't agree with what you wanted to do or how you wanted to do it. And so, you know, you have to be resilient as an artist to say, no, that doesn't fit me. Could you, you have an example of that? Yeah, I do actually. Um, so I had an exhibition of work that I'm actually going to be releasing uh, tomorrow. And, uh, you know, I reached out to um, a gallery that, you know, was willing to show the work, but didn't want to show the work in the capacity that I wanted to. And I know I knew that the way that they wanted wanted to do it really didn't honor the work, you know, so it was like, OK, I need to make a decision now. Do I do something? just out of out of the fact of just getting it out there but it's not honoring my work or hold off and do something do it the way that i want to do it you know and when i when i rejected that opportunity i was like sweating it because i hadn't had many opportunities to to really follow through with the project before that so i was like okay is this going to be my only opportunity but i also activated around my own self and said okay if I'm not taking this, I got to work that much harder. I got to knock on this much more doors. I got to push that much harder to get it to where I want to be if I'm going to reject this offer. Otherwise, I just need to go ahead and take it, you know. So and it, 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 it ended up working, working out, you know, and and, and to go back a little bit about uh, what Jay was saying about choices. You know, I almost go in. I go into opportunities thinking about, OK, what do I do? when I get this opportunity, but also what do I do when I don't get it, right? I'm thinking of both sides immediately, not after the fact, what do I do? But what do I do when I don't get it even more than what I do when I do get it? Because if you get it, it's going to be clean. It's going to be easy sailing. You know, the, the, the part that can strip you of your motivation is when I don't get it. So, you know, I think a little bit extra about that on the backside in preparation for that, you know, so, um, you know, it's, for me, it's for me. It's always pr preparation is a big thing for me, and I think it's a big thing for me because because I've always sort of lacked 
proper preparation. Even in high school, I wasn't a big studier. You know what I'm saying? I show up to the test with a broken pencil, you know what I'm saying, type of situation. And uh, I learned that that didn't really work. So as an adult, as a businessman, you know, I've, I've been really focused on just like preparing myself for the best and the worst. You're talking to Mr. Procrastinator himself. You hear me, okay? So I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, I just wanna make, I, I can feel it from talking to you all. So they have seven resilient skills and they go by competence, confidence, connection, character, contribution, coping and control, right? So when you think about these seven C's, right? I just noticed that, right? So when you think about it like competence, confidence, connection, character, contribution, coping, and control. All seven of those things contribute to your business. Is it one that just helps you, like particularly like run your business how it's running how, or make it escalate and grow? I mean, I jump in there again. I'm gonna I'm I'm go with control because, you know, I make sure that, you know, every project, every project I jump into is, is under my control. You know, I, I make the checklist, I see it through, I decide on what it is. And not that I don't listen to outside opinion or gather opinion from people or insight from other things, but when it comes down to the final say, I make sure that, you know, it's me. And, and I make sure that I understand whether it's good or it's bad that, you know, it was my final decision. So I just try to control what I do in a way that, you know, um, my vision, it, it, I follow through on my vision and again, honor, honor my work, my own work. Yeah, I'll just use my example. My three, uh, the three that just came to me with character, contribution and connection. Cause as a DJ, I started out for free. Like I'm literally just pivoting out of that. Finally, pivoting out of that. Like uh, I had to use my connections and show what I could do instead of, you know, expect to be hired to do that. And it kind of opened the doors and making connections with people based on my character basically really is what blew my whole, everything that is now is actually because of that. I know that that's what worked for me. Um, Jay Coleman. Oh, yeah. I would, um, say, I would say, say, I'm just gonna piggyback real quick on that, but um, I agree with the, the, the work for free thing because as a photography, it's like, I did a lot of free, free things just to build some, build enough stable ground to where I felt like I couldn't be denied. So I'm sorry, Jay. Nah, you're good, man. Um, I would say that for me, it's been character. Um, it would probably then be control, but you don't have control over a lot of things, especially when you're doing work for the public realm and it's very subjective. Some people like figurative work. Some people like abstract work. You know, you can't please everybody. And, and, and when you're doing work for hire, unless you're someone that can put a dot on a piece of paper and put it on the wall and know that it's going to sell for a million dollars, you know, you can either win or lose that day. And it's not based on your skill set. It's some people that suck to get paid. It's at, at whatever craft that they do in, in, in any realm, whether you're DJing, uh, painting, shooting photos, acting, there's some people that are not uh, masters of their craft that did do well. So you can't really um, get caught up in that. So I start with my character in terms of if someone knows that they're getting a piece from me, they know they're getting more than what they pay for. They know they're getting something authentically black and not because of my skin color, um, because of how I move, how I think and how I function and the ability, you know, to just, you know, to be able to go in any part of this city and not have to look over my shoulder from the south side to upper northwest and not have to do this, that's that's worth gold to me. That's worth, so, you know, regardless of who says that they like my work or not, having that, that freedom and having the ability to say to my children that they're not going to go anywhere and hear some shit about their father. That's very important to me. Oh, your dad ain't, they ain't gonna walk around DC and hear that from me. And if they do, then whoever said it got to hear from me. <laughs> but I think character, uh, I think character seeps through everything when you start having interactions with people, whether they be business interactions, personal artists, you know, artists come to collaborate and they over there 
um, excuse my French, dick measuring with you. And I'm like, Slim, I, I'm not even doing that. Oh, well, you're cool. We can get down. We, yeah, man, I, I, ain't, I ain't out here to measure with you, Slim. So um, I think when you have, I, I would say like having played basketball and then also having a swim scholarship, team sport being an individual player, a good player, then you got an individual sport where it's just you against not even the people that are next to you, but the clock. You So you're competing against yourself. And once you have that mindset, it puts you in a whole different place of tripping off what other people say. That stuff starts bouncing off like you were trained and there's some, some stones or something like you, you hear. Um, so I think that character piece, when you leave the room, what are people going to say about you, even if you don't care what they're saying about you? You know, um, does your work speak to your character, to your person, to your whatever you want to say to the world. I think sometimes, I, go I ahead. Know ways. It's, it's sometimes it's business. So, and then I'll ask people, can I be as black as I want to be? All right, well, I'm about to paint this, <laughs> you know? And then they're like, oh shit, that's a little bit much. Man. And, but, I, and I think you're coming to the greatest point about resilience. We can all, we all have a story of absolute failure as an artist. We had an intention, we had a goal, we had a set mission, and it failed. It did not come to pass as we intended. Failed mission, mission failed. So what made you, so resilience, right? Because this is what stops everybody else from keep going, right? So they fail and they say, I'm never doing this again. Throw my hands up, forget the camera, forget the paint. They never paint, they never do their art again. So like, what was an example that made you push through your failure? And I, I like to ask for examples because as an artist looking at you guys who've doing this much longer than I have, it inspires me to keep going. Like hearing about how you got out of them trenches, how you were in a situation that you thought was working and didn't. And you, you get what I'm saying? That it's that relative connection. I'm gonna jump in on that real, real quick and just say that without telling my business, <laughs> you know, cause some stuff, you know, ain't for television, but and any situation that I've gotten through is perspective. And it's a perspective to say that I failed at something or I didn't fail at something. I don't, you know, Miles, Miles Davis like said, it, it, there are no mistakes, there are no wrong notes. The only difference between a wrong note and the right note is the next note you play. So mm -hmm. if you perceive something as failure, then yeah, you're right, you fail. If you perceive it as something to learn from that made you stronger, then it's not a failure. It may have felt like that. It may not be comfortable. Uh, it may not have felt like a win, but six, 10 years down the line, when you look at your progression and be like, well, damn, if I didn't get fired from that job, I wouldn't be here. If I didn't have that person say my shit was ugly, then it wouldn't be dope. So it's all part of a whole holistic vision. So your perspective dictates 90% of that. 90% of that is your perspective. You're getting so, exactly at what I wanted to talk about. Exactly, you're getting exactly at what I wanted to talk about. Like, so Jason, like what's your perspective on, you know, success or accomplishing your goals or, you know, but what's no, next? Uh, yeah, I'm very much in, a, in alignment with what Jay's saying, man. I don't really, and I teach my kids and I coach basketball and football. So it's like, I be telling them, like, it ain't really no losses. It's like wins and lessons. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? Cause you could learn something from, from everything. And um, I just think that that's like, you know, like he, he said it, man, like the, the key thing is perspective, like even success, like that's, that's, that's a uh, subjective to the, to the individual person on, on how they, on how they utilize or lack their, of their perspective, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, those are broad, questions depending upon the individual that you're talking to so a lot you know and there's no right and wrong like some people set milestones or goals for themselves and they measure what success is based off what they've created for themselves you know what i'm saying or you know what i'm saying success for me is like I'm, I'm raising some beautiful children like i got a network of people that's just solid like i ain't got no suckers in my camp you know what i'm saying like to me those are things people with billions of dollars wish and pray and hope for, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, like what is success to me and what is success to somebody else 
could vary and there's no right or wrong answer to it. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel successful that I'm able to, you know, uh, pursue art and uh, be a father and have a strong family and community. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and so to me, I feel, I feel uh, God-like in that sense. And I, and I didn't even bring a financial element into that scope. You know what I'm saying? Whereas though a lot of people, first thing you talk about when you mention what is success, you know what I'm saying? It's like dollar amount and all of those things, which is relevant because we, we exist in this matrix and you know it's, it's a part of the system. But again, like Jay was saying, it's perspective. Like when I view success based on where I came from, um, you know, mentally, spiritually, like, like what my mind was focused on, you know, from in the past when I was a teenager, early 20s, to how I view life and, and, and love and all in, in these experiences now, like I'm super duper successful. And, you know, and, you know, and so the, the money is cool. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? So at this point in my, in my career, I, 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 you know, I do well as an artist, but I put in that groundwork not just with the art, like so. I've been grinding with the art the whole time too. But the but the uh, the the key element is that I've been putting in the work in my spiritual development as a man, and, and, and you know just building my character and you know my you know my 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 integrity is my credential when I sit down at the table with people when we're talking about what I could bring you know as an artist. Yeah, character is definitely, definitely what makes you stand out from the rest. I, I can just, you can feel it from people. You really don't even have to engage with them. You can kind of feel it from their presence, how they carry, how they speak and how they move. Um, Lee, I, I want to I wanna just make sure we keep on with resilience with everybody. Like, you know, what makes you resilient? Well, yeah, I was going to give a failure example, if that's okay. okay. Go for it. Go yeah, for I, got, I, I definitely had some failures. Uh, so when we did the first festival in May 2020, it was at the beginning of the pandemic. And so we basically had a captive audience. People couldn't go anywhere, right? So we sold 500 tickets. We brought on 100 artists. Everybody got, everybody got paid. It was like this beautiful experience. So then when it got to October, I was like, oh, I can do it again. We'll, we'll grow the size of the festival. But at that point, I made a misstep and realized that the world was more open in October of 2020. So instead of selling 500 tickets, we sold 100. And I was like, oh, crap. Like as a producer, my word is my word and my reputation of what matters. That's how people want to work with me. And so I was like, well, I've, I've promised these people gigs. I have to pay them. So what am I going to do about this? Like, no one's going to be like, Lee doesn't pay me. Right. And so I was like, I worked out deals and I was like, let me pay the people who absolutely need the money right now. And then other people, I was like, I'm gonna promise I'll pay you by the end of the year, but like some deferred compensation and we'll work it out. And then I was like, we're still going to produce this event. Like 500 people or a thousand people were tuned in. And then one of the people that tuned in was like, yo, this is amazing. And then we got hired a couple of weeks later for a $30,000 contract, right? So then I was able to pay everybody back, you know, pay people what I said I was going to do. But if I had just been like, well, like throw the whole thing out the window, we failed and just not Quit. put my all into the production, production, we never would have gotten the next contract, right? And so even if one person is in a the room, they, they're going to feel it all and appreciate the work. And I'm glad you brought up the pandemic because that is a big pivot for all of us, for everybody, every single living hey, being. Can on I the say planet. something to Lee real quick? Because he said he was like, he going to give an example of failure, right? I didn't hear yeah. failure though. Right. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. It's like, nah, it look like you just came up, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> right, right. I didn't, I didn't see it that way, but I was talking yeah. about an intention. And he, and right, <laughs> he intended to have a show and it just completely fell out but if it, it worked out so got right 30 got the 30 racks after that okay. <laughs> it's a big chat. You know, big you know, chat. You know, but no i was so the pandemic and your artistry and your business sis how has the pandemic made you focus shift you know let's just like give the people some examples of like you know what made you what how it's worked for you or how it's changed and worked because now it's been what two years three almost crazy for, for me for me the, the pandemic was actually a blessing because it really forced me um um and that that's not that's not to minimize anything that anybody else has gone through because i know there's some tragic stories coming out of it but for me uh you know i transitioned and pivoted from this 
chasing this dream as this like hip hop photographer to going more into like this storyteller as a journal as a journalist and without the pandemic i would still be chasing these stages which ultimately have no stability and don't really have a future um and with this pivot that i i was forced 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 to make you know it put me in a position of a curator uh, as a community organizer as a storyteller historian and 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 and, and it was really an aha moment for me because as an adult i'd never been forced to do something and then it actually worked out in my favor on that level you know so it was really an aha moment for me you know it's it's like you know they say you learn more from your your losses right you know i you know as a as a upcoming uh entrepreneur or even a veteran entrepreneur it's like you have to really dissect those losses more than your wins almost because in those losses you're going to do a lot of character building and then that character building is going to feed over into your wins right and it, that's going to build you out and it's going to, and like jay was saying it's going to jay sun was saying it's like you know you're building your character so that when you go into these other situations you know you're really leaning on that when you're building relationships with people to have this 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 you know solid character and people appreciate that people want to work with that people want to build with that you know what i'm saying so um that's how the pandemic really changed things for me Anybody else want to, uh, cause I, the pandemic is, it hit, it hit, it hit. Well, I, you know, once again, um, there are certain professions that took a hit because of the nature of the work. So if you were a Metro train operator and they shut down Metro, yeah, you was asked out. Um, but it also allowed people to dig deep and, and, and that resilience you talk about, um, you know, African art is functional art. So if you see a spoon, it's not just to put on your wall decoratively, it's for eating with. So, you know, and, and I want my art to be functional. So uh, you got to adapt. So I think there was a part in the beginning of the pandemic. Um, I had finished, I did a, a thing for Randall Highlands Elementary School for the Ellen Show and Michelle Obama. We did their tennis court. And um, Yo, congratulations. Some, some joints supposed to come. People were like, oh, yeah, you, Ellen, you know, you go, you about to be famous. No, that's not the way it works. <laughs> so I, I did stuff for Ellen twice and I still ain't uh, rich. But <laughs> the point is, um, you know, I had some, some things lined up and they just shut down. And uh, I'm like, damn, okay, well, what I got to do? I got to do something else. So that's when your real creative juices come in because when I think about an artist, I don't think about somebody who's just talented or skillful. I think about a problem solver. Art is solving problems. You may have an idea uh, for a film or for a DJ set or, you know, but, you know, until you kind of problem solve and say, okay, well, this will work with this song, or this will go work with this. Look, little dog, you can't get away from you. Oh, um, it, uh, you know, you, you really did got to dig deep in those moments and find answers to questions and make it happen. So one of the things I wanted to address with resilience is um, people's perspective, once again, on what we do. It's assumed that if you are making money off of your art, that you're famous or that you're rich or that you something, something, Ball. if you 200 bucks, you this. Now, if you're living off your artwork full time, the assumption is that you got you you live in the dream. I hear that all the time. Oh, you an artist? You live in the dream? Balling? You balling? Mm -hmm. You balling? Okay. I, yeah, listen, I hear it too, and I'm broke. I, I, I would complete the dream. So let's 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 get all the misconceptions out there. You might be living check to check, and it just like Lee was saying, it might be a thirty thousand dollar check a $50,000 check and you might be living from check to check, but a couple months down the line when all your bills come through, that 50 gets real small, real quick. Um, and people may not understand the, as a business person, what you have to put out to make what you make. So as a, as a, as a muralist, okay, if I get money for a mural, most of that's coming to me minus 
whatever it takes to put it up, maybe some supplies. Now, a bronze sculpture, where the bronze costs money, the metal costs have gone up, the fabrication is out of the ceiling. I don't pour molten bronze into a mold. Somebody got to make the mold. I make the sculpture. Then the rest of the money goes to whoever else. So out of a, a $50,000 gig or $100,000 gig, you know, I'm making a very small percentage of that as the sculptor when I'm not making any of that stuff. And people assume, oh, you put this big monument up. Well, guess who got the money? The people that poured the bronze and, and welded all this stuff together for the monument. I make mine out of clay. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I, I think like we just uh, to wrap on that, it's just the magic art of the pivot. Right. Like we just got to learn how to pivot when things happen. You really you sit in it, but you got to learn how to pivot. When you pivot, things keep happening. Um, we're going to open the floor for some questions from the from the floor. If anybody has any questions, you can drop them on in the chat to whoever, whatever, because we are almost out of time. It, time go by fast when you rapping, don't it? By quick. Okay, when you get to rapping, it go by real quick. All right. Uh, can I just say something real quick in terms of oh. a pandemic lesson? I think there's been two. I think one is that because we create a digital content that people can view our stuff around the country and around the world, right? And so I think that reach is really exciting for us as we connect with like other like black LGBTQ plus communities. And I think the, so to dream, to dream bigger and know that more people are gonna see our work. And I think the other thing is to, to know our worth and charge for it because we used to say yes to everybody. Like, oh, we want to work with you. Like, okay. And then it'd be hours and hours later. And I'd be like, I think we made a dollar on this project, right? And so now it's like, whatever number I'm thinking, I know I need to double it because I'm still probably not charging enough. And so that ooh, I can ooh, take care of myself and take care of you. You're speaking to me right now and you're speaking to yeah. me. So those so are my I got a question for Lee, actually. So did your... Did your split uh, versus like doing digital content versus in-person content, did it change during the pandemic and did it change after the pandemic? Like, did you make up ground on one side or the other after the pandemic? Well, actually we had never done digital content before. Before the pandemic, we were like throwing parties on U Street. And like, so we were bringing people together for in-person events and we like worked on music festivals and things like that. And then because of the, the Rona, it was like, we couldn't do our, um, in-person events. So we're like, well, what's the Zoom thing? We're going to figure it out. And then we ended, ended up doing a five-day festival over Zoom, right? And people would like log in every day and like have these experiences. And then someone saw it and was like, oh, that's cool. Well, could you make a video? And so it, it grew from there, but it wasn't anything we had planned. It just, we just responded and we knew that people were feeling disconnected and we wanted them to feel connected during this time. And it was around the time of DC Black Pride. It was like the 30th of anniversary. We couldn't come together. And so it, was, it wasn't planned at all but we've just grown with it. I, I, I love it, a risk. You took a risk, because that's what it, that's the other side of resilience, right? You got to keep taking risks to grow your business, right? So we got five minutes left. We're going to wrap it up. Oh, somebody has a question. So uh, Trisha, who is that question for? The question is, what inspired you to get in your field? Oh, for everybody. So what inspired you to get in your field? And we can wrap up with that. So what inspired you to get in your field, Jason? Jason? Uh, well, I knew since I was like eight years old, I wanted to uh, make films. But it was, it was a couple of specific instances that I was like, that gave me the confidence that I believe I could do it. So the first joint is like when I was about 10, my father took me to this Broadway play in New York and it was called uh, Tap Dance Kid, right? And it was uh, Alfonso Ribeiro, Carlton. Uh, and I just saw, like, you know, I, we was on Broadway, so it was like, obviously, it was like a huge theater. And in, like, certain parts of the play, it was just him on stage by himself. And I saw this little 10, 11 year old little kid just have the attention of this huge theater. And I was like, yo, I, I just didn't think that that was something a, a young black boy could do, like, have such a commanding presence, you know, because the, the audience was like, like a white audience and you know it's like they were like it all standing up standing ovation so that was the first instance that I was like oh like we can do things and then the second thing is like when I was a kid again I was living with my father at the time I just remember I used to run home to go 
um, watch TV. Like, cause it, you know, I'm old. So it's like my little after school programming, it was like GI Joe, Transformers, Voltron, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. And I just remember like being like in my last period in school and like, so it's like a magnet. Like I was just, I just go and I was like, yo, I want to be able to do with that box with the picture on it does to people. Like I want to be the creator of, you know, uh, making people want to run to that box to see something that I created. So those were like the things that kind of like started the wheels turning to be like, yo, I want to be able to create content or a story or characters that, you know, one, seeing that little boy on that stage and be, you know, have people drawn to him. Right. Then, then two, like I saw this stuff inside of a box that I was just naturally, I, you know, oh. I would run home. I was like, I want to be able to do that to other people. So those were like the two instances in my childhood that kind of, you know, want, uh, uh, made me want to pursue like television production and theater and film. Cause I just wanted to be able to communicate with people in a way, you know what I'm saying? That, that drew them to what I created. No, I, I mean, I so I just realizing you telling that story. It's important that we tell our stories. Um, why we do what we do. Like that was mad dope that you went to go see that play, and that yeah. that actually stuck out to you because it's I, it's gonna actually hang with me. That because mm -hmm. when I first went to go see the Lion King, it was kind of the same experience. Mm -hmm. Um, anybody else like um, want to share? Oh, we only we only got that much time left. I, you know, if you want to drop something in real quick. Drop another uh, social media plug. Let people know what's coming next. We can all do that because there's uh, plenty of other activities going on this week. Definitely. I just want to say shout out to the Anacostia Art Center, uh, Wykiff. Uh, uh, shout out to the homies on this. Appreciate y'all having me. For sure. I dropped my social medias in the, in the chat already, website, all that. So y'all can definitely peep there. And I'm um, just looking forward to, you know, continuing to connect. Yes, indeed. Thank you as well. Uh, I hope to, you know, potentially collab artistically. You know, we, we, we talk to talk, but we all have an area where the wires could cross uh, creatively. So let's have that conversation, um, you know, and uh, salute to Wakiv, salute to the hosts. Salute to Anacostia Arts, all the brethren. Um, salute to all the information that you all shared, you know, and um, salute to black women. Okay. And <laughs> 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 <Shit>. <laughs> um, but no, I give thanks for, for having me as part of this. And um, I'm gonna try, I, I wasn't able to send my stuff over the chat. I don't know why I wouldn't. My uh, my iPad races, but um, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll we'll definitely uh, we need to link up soon. But give thanks. Absolutely. So this is DJ Art. Is I want to thank y'all once again for coming out, sharing your perspective. It's very important that we um, encourage. I know they recorded this. It's <clears> important <throat> that the conversation one gets shared. People kind of learn about us from what we went through. So I'm, I'm grateful that you guys could join me in this experience. And I know that this is the first of many. So I want everybody to tune in. The open house is this Sunday, if y'all free at the Anacostia Arts Center, just stop on through, say, hey. Um, until then, see y'all next time. DJ R is, and I think they're signing out. And just before we go real quick, oh. Art is just yeah, right to piggyback what you said, uh, more events from the Anacostia Arts Center. We check out in the chat, uh, all the Black History programs are coming up, www.eventbrite.com, right there, checking the link, check it out, beautiful stuff happening. Also, I mentioned earlier, uh, Wake of Ex uh, Capital Extend Accelerator Program, if you're interested in the business, want to get that individualized uh, additional help, the link is in the chat as well. And uh, that's it. So like I said, check out all the uh, comments in, in the section. Once again, Anacarta Arts Black History Programs coming up, and then also our Accelerator Program everything in the chat. And I think, uh, uh, Cedric, uh, let me see what else. Yeah, I don't want to go into everything, but anyway, everything's over there to be checked out. Take a look at it. Enjoy yourself. Thank you guys, everybody, everyone, ladies, gents, uh, everybody else, beautiful people, lovely spirits. Uh, we appreciate every you coming tonight and sharing and listening and brothers. Thank you for your spirit. 
Thank you for your time and your energy. It's been wonderful. I love listening to it. Continue moving forward, resilience and prosper. Until next time, folks, have a great evening. Peace. Enjoy. Thank you.